So you may be thinking that all these things I'm going to be talking about in this video are going to be something to do with graffiti tools like markers, mops, spray paint, caps, etc. But we're going to be talking about the stuff that not a lot of people actually talk about. So let's get straight into it. The top 10 graffiti tools that every writer needs. Number one, bolt cutters. Now bolt cutters are pretty self-explanatory. Obviously if you're doing graffiti, you're already trespassing or you're thinking of trespassing. So why not have have something like bolt cutters or even a battery powered grinder. You could also bring a hacksaw with you. Basically any means necessary to cut through locks, cut through wired fencing and so on and so forth. Number two, some comfortable running shoes. Been a part of the culture forever. Having designer running shoes or running shoes just in general that are comfortable for running. So if you have to hit the legs, you have the correct footwear to do so. Number three, any type of mask. Generally people seem to go with a balaclava approach because it covers most of your face and if not your whole head. Therefore it's probably the best thing to do covering your whole head covers up the type of hair color you have if you have a beard or not etc etc. Number four gloves. Obviously you want to go for a certain type of glove that doesn't leave fingerprints because believe it or not surgical rubber gloves actually leave a little bit of an imprint of your fingerprint. So you want to go for one of those thick kind of gloves but not too thick like a dishwasher type of glove where it's all loose and thick. Something that's comfortable, something that you can hold a can competently with and obviously something that you don't care if you get pain on. Number five, a disposable camera. Now many people will agree with me these these days that you shouldn't bring your phone or anything personal with you on a serious bombing or graffiti mission and also keeping it traditional and only taking photos of your work with a disposable camera and then them getting them printed out it's pretty much how they used to do it back in the old days and the old school times of graffiti so why not keep that tradition strong and also for some reason if you have to ditch the camera it doesn't really matter because it's disposable number six a high-vis vest now most of the time the rule of thumb is no one really asks many questions or any questions as to what or who you're doing if you got high vis on because generally people will just think that you're doing something in terms of work you're working on something construction worker if you're in the train yards riders have been known to somehow mimic and take metro high vis vests and pretend that they are metro workers so they can freely walk around the train yards without being spotted or anything like that number seven a lighter now you might be wondering a lighter what the hell so basically it's a little hack I would like to say if you need your paint to dry quicker you can quickly light a can on fire like a flamethrower you can also use it as a weapon but let's not get into that number eight a fake ID. Now generally we'll just go for the fake ID just in case you do get apprehended and the cops ask for identification. You're quickly given that and then Bob's your uncle. Number nine, a map of the city and or sewer lines. Just so you generally know where you're going if you're doing underground stuff or to keep a track of where you are or to plan out a trip or plan out a route that you'd like to hit. It's more of a novelty item but it's still damn cool. And as for number 10, I'm gonna let you guys in the comment section below let us know what else we need. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and have a good one.